Hello again and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while that I didn't have time to upload anything on my channel, sorry about that. But today I was thinking about uploading a method that I uh, have in order to select a region of interest. If you have a large data set and you want to only work on one region of it, there are different ways to cut out and crop basically within that data range. And this is a code that I developed in order to quickly find out, uh, find two regions and then select those two regions and select the data from the wider data range that we had. So imagine that uh, you have a sample one um, data file that I have here. I'm going to load it and then um, I'm going to show you how this code is going to work. But what we have here is a continuation uh, variable. So if it's one, it means that continue. If it's zero, it means that don't continue because I want to ask myself several times if you want to continue selecting another region or not. And also number of samples, like measurement numbers, they, um, starts from zero, then in the first iteration it's gonna go to one. Um, I'm gonna create this uh, directory of exported region of interest with the current date, for example. And then uh, this is gonna be on my um, on the same folder that uh, my math file are located. And then I'm gonna have a main loop uh, while continuation is going to be one, um, if m uh, measurement number is not equal to zero, ask this thing, because after the first iteration I want to be asked, do you want to continue? And then um, if that continuation is yes, just continue. If it's no, then uh, we're going to come out of the loop. So um, what we're going to do here is that we're going to show the data which is going to be on x and y so x and y and then uh, we're going to have that data being shown and then we're going to have for example measured data as the x lay as the y label and then we're going to select two points from it what happened next is that we're going to have g input which is a function in matlab the same code can be run also on Octave. Uh, the G input is one of the native uh, function over there as well. So what will happen is that you're gonna have two um, variable as the outcome of this function, X and Y, and then the, the other one that we don't need. So using that X and Y, we can find out what is the um, closest X in the uh, data set that we have using this part, minimum of absolute, difference between px1, the one that the g input is getting out, uh, or the output of it, and the x value that we have as our data set. And then we're going to have some plus to basically some lines to show you exactly which point we're selecting from that. And then we're going to repeat it for the other point, the second point. And then we are going to have uh, our capital X, capital Y value, which is the selected region of the small x, small y. So basically what we're doing is that we are going to go over different regions and select and export all those regions of interest. Let's take a look at how this code is going to work. So, uh, my first sample is going to be sample 1 that, um, that is going to be loaded. The first thing is to run the code. Uh, the code is on the same folder as the samples so it should be easy. Say change the folder here it's going to read the sample one. It's going to load it. First thing is to create the um, exported region of interest. The next thing is that MATLAB is going to show me a figure that I can select region from. So here is my graph. Um, I'm going to select a region using this function g input so i'm going to select this point and you see that when i'm selecting it it's going to get uh, another point that is going to be super close to it um, it's not that important for this specific task to find out the exact spot i just want to be able to select a region from here to here for example and forget about the rest of the graph so if i want to do any kind of measurement on this region, I can select these regions and basically it's going to select the X values and then I'm going to have this region of interest number one exported or extracted from the main data set that we had. 
So now, after it's saving everything, it's gonna ask me, so far, one region were measured, for sample, blah, blah, continue measuring for another region. If I say no, I'm gonna come out of the loop. If I say yes, I'm gonna go over the loop again. Say yes for now. And then I'm gonna select another region, another uh, region of interest, for example, something between here and here. And you saw that huge jump is because I don't have any X data between the point that I selected and the other X, and the difference was the minimum within that range. So here, continue measurement for another region, I would say no, but let's see what will happen here. After the loop closes, I'm gonna have uh, the PDF, for example, of the data that I was selecting, this one, or for example, for the second point, I have another one, region of interest number two. And also I have my math files, uh, which are the X and Y, capital X and Y exported as well. Um, I want to show you another example, which is very common, for example, if you want to do and analyze uh, tensile test samples from raw data that the machine is going to give you. So if I select this sample too, this is the actual raw data from um, a te compression test that we did a long time ago. So here you'll see that there are lots of uh, serrations which will be filtered out at some point. But here, what my main focus is to remove any data point that is irregular uh, from this data set, especially after the failure. After the failure, I'm not going to rely on any of that of those data. So uh, and, and it will also impact my filtering system. So I'm going to select, for example, this point, and the last point is going to be somewhere here. And using these two points, I should be able to get the flow curve without the fracture part. Do you want to continue? Simply no. So here I'm going to have my, and it's going to be overwritten on the previous one because I didn't change the name or anything, but it's going to be my flow curve for that specific uh, sample. I hope that it was useful for you. I'm going to share this file. Uh, with you um, through my website and the link is going to be in the description. So feel free to download it and use any part of it as you will find useful. Just before I go, I want to show you that this thing can be also used in, um, in Octave because we are not using any specific function that Octave doesn't have it. So G input function is also a native function in Octave and you don't need to open up any packages. So here is the Octave um, run, and I'm going to select the sample number two again. So if I open it up and run it, I'm going to be able to select the first point and the last point. And then it's going to show me the exact range of the, the data that I selected. Or if I want to, for example, work on another region on the same sample, I can say that I want to only work on this region and then it's gonna show me that specific data point. I hope this thing could be useful for you. Uh, until next time, have a good one, bye-bye.